Welcome to episode 1 of our information series, Basics of Electrostatics. With this information series, we want to share our know-how about electrostatics with you to make electrostatic applications safer. Olaf, tell us what did you bring for us today? Today we are going to look at how we can charge this plastic tube here, and then how you can lift some particles with it. And then we will also explain the effect behind it. But first of all, Michael, the question to you. What do you think how old is electrostatics? Honestly, no idea. First, it were the cavemen who have experienced what happens when an animal fur rubs against something that it might line up or something similar. The first time it became known was 600 before Christ, namely the ancient Greeks, the natural philosopher Thales of Milet, to be exact. He rubbed against an amber and then lifted small particles with it. By the way, amber is called electron. So, that's actually where the whole foundation comes from. And then later 1600, in London, William Gilbert introduced modern electricity. He was the first one to clearly distinguish between magnetism and static electricity, because at that time one only saw that both attract other things, the magnet as well as electrostatics. He coined the term electric in his book De Magneti. So we go back to 600 BC. Okay. Today we don't have amber, because the modern plastics can be charged better. Here I have a cotton towel, and I can, if I rub the cotton towel here, I already hear some crackles. Yes, exactly. One can hear the load that is already charged. I'm wearing gloves, so that I do not make grease stains on it which would cause a discharge. And when I have charged this plastic tube, I can use it to attract these small particles. As you can see here, beautifully. Talas of Milet lifted up spices back then and made quite an impression with it. On such an old electroscope, we can prove that there is load on the tube. When I put the tube here, the pointer of the electroscope moves. Why is it that when I rub a tube like this here, it charges up? Therefore, we have to change the setup quickly, because we have a more impressive one. As you can see, we have changed the setup. Olaf, can you explain to us what we have here? Yes, here we have a larger version of an electroscope. With such an electroscope, I can measure loss freely. If I would use a voltmeter with a very high impedance to measure high voltage, I would lose some of the load due to the measuring resistor. Such an electroscope only works with the repulsive force. Here we have a PVC base. And here I have a metal plate. The metal plate has an insulating handle and we have a high voltage cable with which we connect this to the electroscope. Now it is like this. The electrostatics or the charge arises if I bring two materials with a different electron exit energy closer than 10 nanometers to each other. The material with the higher electron exit energy steals electrons from the one with the lower electron exit energy. It sounds very complicated. One can simply imagine. Different materials have a different attraction to the electrons. For example, this PVC plate here, it has a big attraction, so it attracts the electrons very strongly, while the metal is conductive. That's why I can move an electron back and forth in the metal. This means that the PVC plate attracts the electrons more and steals electrons from the metal plate. And if I quickly separate them from each other, then I suddenly have an electron deficiency on the metal plate. Electron deficiency means the protons in the nucleus predominate, and so the metal plate would be positively charged, and the PVC plate negatively, because it has an excess of electrons. 
Let's try it. And by the way, 10 nanometers is called a Helmholtz layer. Now I press here. Nothing happens. Yes, nothing happens. Why could that be? Do you have an explanation? Quite simple. 10 nanometers is so little that we can't even do that here, because we have a thin layer of air between the plate and the PVC backing. Now if I rub the air out, and then lift, yes, then we have 10,000 volts here, and you are now allowed to discharge it. One feels it a little bit, but it is not particularly painful. So that's how friction creates electrostatics. It's actually not the friction, but the friction ensures that we reach these 10 nanometers. And that's why you can charge objects with help of the friction. Not bad. We learned something today. Excellent. If you like this episode, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel in order to not miss the next episode. We will start a series called Basics of Electrostatics and upload new videos on this topic every now and then. And in the next episode, we explain what this inclined plane and these three plastic tubes are for. I promise that it will be very exciting. Wonderful. Then that's it for this time. And we're looking forward to seeing you next time.